Hello everyone and welcome to a quick overview of the design and manufacturing process, uh, including SOLIDWORKS CAM. So what we're, we're going to do today is we're just going to start with this, this basic design part we have here and we're going to go through the process of manufacturing this component. One of the things you'll notice is we do already have some of our uh, MBD information here. So if we go ahead and take a look at the front view, you can see that we have some, some information called out. Uh, we'll talk about inspection here a little bit later, but we're going to start by talking about the SOLIDWORKS CAM component. Uh, and before we go to that, let's just go ahead and hide this for a second. And we'll talk about the process of using SOLIDWORKS CAM. Now today in SOLIDWORKS 2018 and newer versions of SOLIDWORKS, um, every person on subscription automatically gets SOLIDWORKS CAM standard and that gives you the ability to do machining on a simple part like we see on the screen. Uh, it gives us the ability to do water jet laser, plasma, routers, mills uh, in, in a part mode environment. But what I'm going to show you today is I'm going to show you a little bit of SOLIDWORKS CAM Professional, uh, which allows you to do assemblies and, and has some more advanced functionality. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to jump over to an assembly quick. And one of the cool things about SOLIDWORKS CAM uh, being integrated with SOLIDWORKS is the ability to use assemblies and being able to use some of the, the automation routines. So this is our standard Curt Vice that we have. Um, it's something that I have set up on my machine that we run over and over and over. And what we're going to do is we're actually just going to take these two parts, or take the part and put it in the assembly. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and we'll do a quick insert. We'll grab our part, drop it out on the screen, and you can see we now quickly and easily add it. We're just using basic SOLIDWORKS functionality at this point. I can rotate it. Um, but I have some stuff set up in this in here that is common things of how I machine my parts on my machine. So we'll quickly use some mates. Uh, we'll go ahead and make these parallel here. And we'll just get a quick layout from the top of this. And if we go ahead and look at the top, we'll just move that guy somewhere close. Now, one of the cool things about using uh, automation within SOLIDWORKS assemblies is I have the ability to do um, auto sizing of stock based on the components. Uh, so if we go ahead and jump over here, you can see that it'll automatically size my stock to the nearest size and shape. That's just using some of you know the, the cool things that we have with SOLIDWORKS and SOLIDWORKS CAM today. So once we have that part laid out, we'll say this is a pretty good place. We know from a process management standpoint, we need to order material that's seven inch by three inch by one and a quarter. That was all calculated based off the part that I dropped in here. What's cool about this is, is I have the ability to design my part, drop it in my fixture, and very quickly and easily determine the stock that I need to order. But then I also have the ability to add more information, like if I want that to be rounded to the nearest half inch, uh, what type of grips I'm using. I can use all of the properties that I have within this file to control how that automation behaves. So it's a pretty cool setup and it allows me to program my parts pretty quick and easy. So from here, we'll just jump over to the SOLIDWORKS CAM portion and we're gonna start by telling it what we wanna machine. So we'll just say, yeah, we wanna machine that part. Uh, our coordinate system is okay. For our stock, we'll go ahead and leverage some of the uh, geometry we have here on the screen. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and pick the stock. For distance or depth, we want this to automatically just go up to the top of this. And what's cool is, is by building in these references, if, if my part changes or my material changes, uh, the stock for SOLIDWORKS CAM automatically updates. So I'm building in a lot of that design intent, if you will, across the component. From here, we're now sort of at the point where we have we have two ways we can handle this. We can uh, go find the features interactively where I can pick what the pockets and holes and bosses are, or I can use feature recognition to find some of those. And what's cool about feature recognition is I have the ability to tell it what type of geometry I want it to find. So I can say, hey, just go find any tapered and filleted pockets and any perimeters. Maybe I want to add the holes myself. So from here, in this example, I'll just say, hey, just go find that geometry based on what we have. And you can see that it went and found the perimeter for us, you know, fairly quickly and then automatically picked and put in the tools. But there's something I want to show you about what it did there, because sometimes it looks a little too good to be true. So what we're going to start with here is we're just going to do a interactive uh, recognition of our features. So we're just going to come in here and we're going to say, I just want to find a 2.5 axis feature. And from our 2.5 axis feature, I want to find these pockets here in the middle. And you'll notice I just go pick the geometry, it automatically creates the chain in the, or the loop. 
And I don't know what this depth is, but I just want it to go from the bottom of this face to the top. Again, the engineer has already figured that out for me. I'm just now putting the tool paths on to make it successful. For our strategies, we'll just do a rough and a finish. We'll hit okay. And we now have the rectangular pocket and the Abraham pockets uh, defined. And what's cool about this is by a couple clicks here, if I look at the parameters, I know everything there is to know about that geometry. I know the length, the width, the depth, if it has any fillets, what the internal fillet of this pocket is here. And you may be saying, well, yeah, that's great. I can do that in a traditional CAM system. But traditionally in CAM, you would have to go measure all that stuff and then determine the size of tool that's going to be used. Where here in our methodology, we're just picking the geometry, letting it capture everything for us. So then when we generate or grab the tools through the operation plan, it'll automatically grab the correct size of tool to fit these radiuses. So that's one of the things that makes Solidworks Cam a little different. It's not the feature recognition, everybody has that. It's once we have that geometry and, that, and understanding of what we're going to machine, we can automatically select the material type, the lead in lead out, the depth of cut, the feeds and speeds, all based on the material that's being machined. So very quickly and easily, I'm now able to capture my company practices and get the best practices for how I machine these parts in my shop with my equipment. So one more thing we'll do here quick is we'll generate these and then we'll create the tool paths. Now, even though it automatically selected that for me, I always have the ability to go over and make any changes I wanna make. So I can open it up, I can change my tools, I can change how I want to rough. Uh, again, in Solders Cam Pro, I could say I wanna use a volume mill for high speed uh, to, to machine that faster and reduce the wear on my tooling. Uh, and I can come back and I can interrogate how long each tool path is going to take. So just because I'm automating the process doesn't mean I lose any control over how I wanna machine my parts. Last thing we'll do here quick is we'll do another quick two and a half axis feature. Uh, we'll pick the geometry for these holes and we'll just mill these out as a pocket, but I do have the ability to go through and set this to a drill. So if I wanted it to be a hole or a boss or, or treat it different than a pocket, I can. Um, for this one, we'll just rough it to size because maybe the tolerances allow us to just rough it. Um, for depth, again, we'll just pick the bottom of the part. I can go up to stock if I want to, but it, it's again, just a programming preference for myself. So we'll go ahead and we'll generate this. We'll generate those two. And we now have our tool paths done. So we did that pretty quick within SolidWorks, but we're, we're capturing a lot of stuff as we're programming here too. Because if I go and look at simulation, I just see my stock. Well, let's say I want to check for clearances in my assembly. I have the ability to define what fixtures or components I want to have added to check for simulation. So if I hit OK now and I go to simulate, you can see those components I'm concerned about running into are now there and I can see them or interrogate them as I go through and machine my part. So if we run this through, we can quickly see how this is going to run around. So we'll go ahead and run that. We also have the ability, you can see here, there's red, and we intentionally did that to show you have the ability to check for collisions. Now I can also tell it if I wanna stop for a collision, but it also highlights red to let me know that the tool did not stick out far enough from the holder, and then I would actually have a crash or a collision here. So you have the ability to adjust how you want that to be handled, you could have it stop. But it's a really good tool to interrogate and make sure what you're machining is correct. So from here, Obviously, if we do any design changes or updates, uh, everything will automatically transfer over. But at this point, we could, we could simply go through and uh, pick a post processor and post this out to G-code. Uh, so if we come down here, we'll go to my machine. We'll select that, hit OK. And then if we wanted to post this out, we now have our G-code to go ahead and post this out from. Once it's posted, it opens up in the uh, NC editor, which allows me to do some cool things like back plotting, send to my machine, look at the tool paths, interrogate where they're at. Uh, I do have simulation here that actually runs based off of the G code that's being output. So if I started stepping through this process, 
Let me zoom up here just a little bit. You have the ability to see the tool paths and where it's actually going to run. So you can see it's coming in from home position, moving over, and then running those. And again, at this point, I could go ahead and send it to my machine if I wanted to. I can also adjust spindle speed, make some basic NC edits. Um, so that, that's a pretty quick overview uh, of the basics of SolidWorks Cam, but there's some cool things we can add to it too. So let's go ahead and pop back over to our part. And there's some, there's some additional things we can do here. Now, a lot of people want to do engraving on components. They want to have, you know, serial numbers. They want to have logos, uh, warning, warning components of those, that nature. Um, although we can do a lot of that in SolidWorks, one of the cool things uh, that is available in DraftSite is the ability to uh, convert an image to a vector file. So if we go ahead and take a quick look here uh, in our folder, we got some images stored up and we have an image that we're going to use here that's going to be an image for hot. Okay, so we brought this in. It's a vector or a raster image that we have today. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go to the add ins that you find in DraftSite Professional and Premium and I'm going to convert that to a vector image. So we're just going to go ahead, we'll pick our logo. And if I want to see what it looks like, we'll just hide the image. And you can see it looks pretty good. We're using lines versus polylines here. So we'll go ahead and hit OK, delete this. And we now have very quickly a DWG that we can import in and use for engraving or marking inside of SolidWorks Cam. So we'll just go ahead and save this. Um, yep, that looks like a good place. We'll toggle back over to SolidWorks quick. And then from here, we're just going to use you know traditional SolidWorks tools. We're going to insert a DWG DXF. So we'll go to DWG. We'll drop this guy in. And using our traditional tools that we have in Sketch, we're just going to move this over. And let's say we need this logo to be marked right here. We'll import our part data. We'll merge it with existing. So any cam features that we had in the previous one, we'll go ahead and merge. And then we can import and port those across. Um, likewise, you always have the ability to come in here at the assembly level and do an engrave as well. It just sort of depends upon uh, what works best for your workflow or what works best for your company. But you can see it takes longer for me to explain a lot of this than it actually does to do the programming because I'm focused on the geometry on the screen, not necessarily picking a million different clicks to make it happen. So if we were to look at this now, we would have our, our engraving here. Another thing that is cool about this is if we go back to our part, we have our program, we have our MBD data, we can then seamlessly flow over and do an inspection. So from SOLIDWORKS inspection, we can actually now leverage all of that geometry together. So if we create a new inspection process, um, we'll go ahead and add that template. We can add in information from the property that we've created before, any of our properties. So if this was coming from PDM like this file, we have the ability to link all of that geometry. Um, let's say our part numbers, any revisions that we have, um, where we want this to be. We'll walk through our workflow, include what we want for inspection or reference dimensions, uh, any GD&T callouts that we want to have, um, precision and range, and then we'll hit OK. And you can see very quickly we have all our inspection balloons added. We have our, our, our list here, our characteristics tree. Uh, we can then go down and pick how we want the inspection to happen for any given item. Um, what type of inspection we want them to have, the quantity that's going to be there, the length. And very quickly we can, we can tie all this together. And what's really cool about this is I now have my MBD, I have my CAM information, and I have my inspection information all tied together. And beyond that, on top of the inspection dimensions, if we go look back at SolidWorks CAM, we also have the ability to read the tolerances of the geometry. Um, and use the same feature recognition like we did before, but instead of just assigning a standard strategy, we have the ability to look at the tolerance and then pick a specific strategy that goes with it. So if I just extract the features like we talked about previously, I could go through and say for any drilled holes, you can see we found two of them, based on the tolerance geometry, 
whether it's undersized, nominal, or oversized, I'm going to apply a specific machining strategy. So if it was undersized, instead of reaming, let's say I just want to bore that. Um, if it's oversized, let's say we'll just drill it. Um, and then based on where it sees these categories, it's gonna automatically assign that machining strategy to this part. So not only am I speeding up my machining process um, and capturing my inspection MBD and CAM in one lot, in one location, I now have the ability to make intelligent decisions for how I wanna manufacture the part based on the tolerances. And one last thing we'll take a look at, while we've been running all of these components and we've been looking at this drawing or looking at this assembly, we actually have been capturing our manufacturing process in a drawing that we can use to educate the person on the floor on how this to specifically set up these components. So if we go ahead and open this drawing up, you can now see here's where the G code file is set up. Here's the post processor I'm using. Here's the date, the file size, the machine type that I'm running. And here's where I want zero to be set on the machine, as well as all of the items needed to machine that part. So I'm capturing the best of everything in, inside of SOLIDWORKS, putting it in a drawing, and then I can simply finalize it with some information here, like who programmed it, uh, the date that it was programmed, what operation it's running to in the floor. So if I'm running IQMS, I can now assign this to the same type of station that IQMS has. And then from here, what machine I wanna run. And if I hit apply, that information now shows up in my drawing sheet. So by simply just programming my part and doing what I do every day today, by leveraging SOLIDWORKS and all of the applications that run in it, I'm creating that seamless integration where I have one group of files that controls everything that my, my company does. So hopefully that gives you a, a quick overview and understanding of the design and manufacturing process how SOLIDWORKS helps enhance the programming uh, workflow, and then how MBD and inspection tie in together to really allow us to leverage all of that data that came from design and engineering to start with.